We're live. Good evening. Hello. And welcome to Simon No Chanama with my special guest all the way from his hot room. <laughs> Victor Gonzalez. I, should, I don't have any sound effects. Usually I have like, used to have applause on the yeah. other one. <laughs> Thank you for having me. And uh, if Frederick is still there, hello, Frederick. <laughs> I'm going to crack open a beer. I'm going to start because we're, we're drinking beers. We're talking beers, beards, cats. Oh, yes, dear, your, your cat. She's not there. I don't know. Ah, uh, she's running around right now. Uh, okay. Cheers. I'm going to have. Cheers. See, it's sort we'll of start off with an Evis and change it up later. Uh, I'm starting with a, a Rodenbach. Red, red, ripened and refreshing. <laughs> it says. Mine's cheap, easily available, <laughs> and won't get you messed up. Ah, that, that's hello. Uh, that's a hello from Frederick. Yes. Hello, hey, Frederick. Frederick. Hey, have you got your beer, Frederick? Oh, oh, you're not allowed to have a beer when you're working. You're probably working, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> mm. Cheers. Oh yeah, I remember that. It's been a while since I've had that. Hmm. So, have you been out? Photographing today, as is your your want. Uh, no, not lately. Oh, uh, to be honest, I've been very, very, very busy, and I uh, have not had the chance lately. I went mm. out last Thursday and snapped a couple pictures, but I still need to go around editing them. Mm. So, I mean, photography then is is kind of like your passion, but mm -hmm. it has to take a it, it kind of has to take a back seat to to work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, fortunately, work involves quite a bit of being on uh, social media and photography. So sometimes you get a little bit burnt out. And by the time you get home, it's the last thing you want to mess with. Yeah, you want to pick up a camera again. <laughs> like, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I definitely need to get a new camera or something because I mean, this thing weighs several bricks, and to carry yeah. this around all the time is a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. You know, you need one of those, one of those uh, like backpack things that you can clip it on. <laughs> <laughs> I wish instead I have this backpack right here that I'm always lugging around. So yeah, that leads nicely. Yeah, well, let's let, let's just go to one of your photographs when you in 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 in, in, in less busy times. Yes, this appeared. Um, this was oh, the, back from spring, obviously. I'm not quite sure whether it was this spring or the previous spring, but this was about two years ago. Yeah. Ah. But when I, you know, I've been I've been doing my research, and um, mm -hmm. and you got a camera because you were going to go to Japan. You thought you better sort of you know have a camera to cut when you when you first moved, went to Japan. You got a camera to sort of record everything. But when did right. you first seriously become interested in photography? Was it then, or, or had you always? Sort of had a kind of a, 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 an interest. Was it something you've been doing for a while before that? Good I question. Mean, um, actually, I got the camera way back in the day in 2012, and I started with a Canon 7D. And the main reason I got it is because I wanted to start making comedy skits and video. Uh, oh. Even back then, I wanted to play around with YouTube. However, uh, since I moved to Japan, I didn't really have anybody to sync up with. Mm. So I kind of gave up the idea of you know making videos. And uh, I just kind of cataloged um, everywhere that I went. Mm. Um, when I first moved out here, I was traveling all over Japan. So I just took pictures of everything. And I used to upload it over on a blog. And that's what was called Kanto Kitsune. Ah, I just, yeah. I, it was primarily a blog and with just random pictures. But I didn't think about editing them or anything like that. It was just straight just snap the picture and, just upload and, it. and raw, a raw file bang sort of up, you know, no, uh, you know, you know, correct. Out, out of focus thing, finger in, in, in front of the lens. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. I didn't really care to be honest. Um, yeah. and then I wasn't even on Instagram until like 2016 or so. Wow. Not late. And then jumping on Instagram, I was kind of like, introduced to this world of you know kind of like photography where everybody's pictures looks amazing while mine look like they come straight from a cell phone so <laughs> i think that was kind of inspiration to uh to try to learn a little bit more about photography learn mm. more about my camera itself and then basically try to take it a little bit more seriously mm. i mean uh, i i have i was introduced to photography as part of um 
a part of my art, art studies. I mean, before that, uh, I didn't really, you know, I just like point and shoot snapshots kind of thing. But oh, doing film, film and video at, at, at college, or time-based media, as they like to call it, um, we, uh, you know, we, we we went out and we had to sort of learn about photography. So yeah, I mean, uh, but after college, that's that's what kind of gave it up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because even before I got into like the whole Instagram side of things, I used to do a lot of night event photography for friends. Mm. Um, I was the only one out here with a, you know, DSLR camera, and I had a lot of friends in the music industry. So whenever they go out to like clubs or have like events or stuff like that, mm. they would invite me over to be their kind of like photographer for the night. Oh. Absolutely lacking any skill, but somehow I was able to fake it till I made it. So <laughs> that was kind of like that was an interesting experience. So yes, yeah, so you had uh, your light, did, you had your light meter hanging around your neck and and and, and, and your lens bag and and, and 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 the shades on the top of your head and. <laughs> so, <laughs> going around I mean, it was a fun experience altogether. <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> Did, did they buy you drinks? This is the question. <laughs> oh, yeah, all the time. <laughs> then I had to keep track of my camera at all times. <laughs> mm. Now, I had some, I had some photographs. I, I, I don't know if, if I, I can go into my computer for this, but mm. do you have any, now that you've become interested in photography or when you became, mm. did, you, did you have any sort of people who, whose example you wish to follow? Perhaps? Except for like Instagrammers, did you uh, did you have any favorite photographers? Anybody who who kind of like make you think, God, I wish I could be like that, or you know, or inspire you to go out and take photographs like that? To be honest, no. no. <laughs> I, oh, I, didn't have any, any, I didn't have any any prior uh, photographers that I like because I mean, what's his name? Like Ansel Adams did a lot mm. of landscape photography with mountains and stuff, and you could find mm. his pictures all over the place. But it's like none of those images really like inspired me. There was no one from like the 50s, 40s, 60s or anything like that that inspired mm. me as a photographer to try to like mimic or to follow in their footsteps. Uh, for me, I was kind of lost and I still am lost on exactly what is my, you know, quote unquote style. Mm. Uh, mm. Being orange, a general, orange like, and blue. Trades. Well, <laughs> that changes. That was just recently. Yeah. <laughs> And by recently, I mean the last three pictures. Up until then, it's been flip-flopping from all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, but after I joined Instagram, I think I first started following this photographer called Masashi Wakui. And Japanese ah, uh, yeah, say that again. I want... Masashi Wakui. I wonder whether I got him, because I, I, I read an article, Japan's top five photographers. He could be in there. Mm. Mm. Yes, it's it's a bit difficult to to to, to find it, but um, the name the name sounds familiar. He does a lot of like uh, kind of like night photography, very kind of like very colorful. And it's very unique. Back in the day, people called him like the Blade Runner uh, photographer for a mm. night, and then because of him, this whole Blade Runner fad exploded. And then when the new Blade Runner mo movie came out, it just became completely oversaturated uh, yeah. <laughs> so he was one of the first photographers that got me into night photography and then after that i would say um <clears throat> i started following liam wong quite uh, a bit he's got a lot of like purple shade uh purple hues in his mm -hmm. uh photography but his style is very unique uh, and uh i don't know i, I really look up to him <clears throat> after that i guess uh oh thanks i was really into just getting pizza. Oh. <laughs> it's hot. It's hot pizza it's from my son. Thank you. I mean, this, this, this is this will be a habit on any Sunday show that I do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Making me jealous here. <laughs> right, 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 yogurt as well for afters. <laughs> yeah, but after that, I would say it's probably this, uh, this one photographer called Hannah Way. She goes by her life in pixels. Her mm. portrait photography is really amazing. Then after that would probably be Cody Ellingham, which is known as CB CBJE Tokyo. Ah, so quite, quite, quite a lot. It's quite a lot. And then mm. recently there's this guy who's also a video video DJ out here in Japan. And he goes by uh, Yako Flipper, FLPR3. Mm -hmm. And uh, his pictures have been 
blowing up all over the world within this last two months or so. Well, I should, what I should really have done is coordinated with you on, on this and, and, and be able to bring up photographs of these of these people and their work. Well, I mean, <laughs> the Meguro River for the Sakura season this year or any year is usually a super popular photo photography spot. Mm -hmm. However, his shot this year was taken at night. And I'm not sure if he photoshopped it or not, but there's like a there's a heart in the picture, and everything mm. else is nice and uh, sakura colored. But this was ah. picked up everywhere. I think you got over. Oh, is that the, the, the trees make a heart shape? Yeah, yes, and then picture. there's a couple looking up at it. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, mm. so you got national coverage on that. So I was just like, okay, wow, right. That's, <laughs> <that's damn. laughs> there, there's Victor running around bending trees. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, yeah. So now there's quite a few photographers out there that I basically look up to. Mm. Now, I'm going to I'm going to just throw a picture up here. I'm going to okay. just, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to photography. Uh, uh, those reoccur in, in question, question nine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we'll, but we'll go here because uh, I read about why you came to Japan and apparently. What inspired you to come to Japan is largely to do with this. Oh, <clears throat> kind of yes and no. sort of this is this viewers. This is a, a, a Japanese J-pop band called Brilliant Green, who I've never heard yes. of before. Um, don't worry, <laughs> uh, many people don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 what I found curious was that um, it was you listening to a particular song of theirs. Um, and that you 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 got all excited about the Japanese language, and mm -hmm. uh, and this is was your was your <clears throat> was your switch. This is what you this is what made you curious and and, and want to find out more. And um, but my question is not you know, you know why, <laughs> <laughs> but would this have been the same if you had listened to a male Japanese voice? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> easily, yes. Yes? Yes, ah. because um, back in my early 20s, I was really, really digging like variety of styles of music. And for me, like the main thing that stood out is that the human voice is also kind of an, an instrument. Mm -hmm. And uh, this song was introduced to me by a friend at the time. And I just, even though I had no idea what the hell they were saying, it like really struck a chord with me and it made it really memorable. So that's why I really enjoyed it and got me interested in the whole, you know, like, okay, what, what language is this? What are they speaking? Uh, mm. I kind of want to learn more about this. So that was kind of like the catalyst. Uh, as for your secondary question, if it was a male voice, I mm. think depending on the song, yes, definitely. That would still uh, spark an interest. Uh, for example, uh, Jay Chow is a very popular, you know, uh, singer. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has quite a few songs that I'm a fan of. I have no idea what the hell he's speaking uh, or what, what he's saying in the songs but i could say i could say that i really genuinely enjoy his uh his music mm -hmm. so yes so yeah the, the voice itself the gender of the voice was not influential no no i think it was just the style of the music at the time that got me got me kind of interested into the language itself mm. <clears throat> so besides the sound of the language and the style mm. I mean that that seems very specific, you know, to to <clears throat> to want to see the, an entire country. Were there any other things that drove you to visit Japan for the first time? Um, yeah. Um, when was it? Like two thousand nine or so. There, I was taking Japanese classes back in my uh, college, and they offered this uh, program called Bridge to Japan. Mm. And they were able to get like twenty or so people. To come as a group to Japan and basically travel up and down the entirety of it. So that was the actual the first time that I came. So I mean, uh, you you were studying Japanese at at college and at school. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I mean was that a, that that was obviously on the curriculum, and you were able to choose that. What made you choose it? Because I learned about this song and this style mm -hmm. of music back in two thousand. So that's back when I was like. 19, 20, 20 or mm -hmm. so, right? 2009 or so is basically when I was trying to wrap up with college. 
And then uh, from there, they were offering the classes. So that's exactly why I took it. Ah. Yeah, Frederick's so asking. There, so there, there was a spread in time. <laughs> so it's been, it's been quite long term. I mean, you know, the, 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 yeah, quite a lot of the people I've interviewed, you know, they, they've had uh, uh, an interest in Japan. Uh, you know, the, the non-Japanese people I've interviewed uh, had an interest in Japan, you know, uh, dating back, you know, quite quite some time. You know, I think uh, I think it was Dave Trippin was saying he was ten when <laughs> when he became interested wow. in Japan. <laughs> like, uh, I was uh, forty six. <laughs> <laughs> um, Frederick's asking, do you know Shonen Knife from Osaka? Not personally, I've heard of him. Yeah. Don't know them as well. You, you don't know the band Shonen and Knife. Don't know them. Oh, it's like it's like um an all women Japanese kawaii version of the Ramones. <laughs> <laughs> if you can if you can picture that. Mm. Now, so uh, let's just have some random Japanese backdrops going going on here. Um, <laughs> Uh, where's my playlist? Play the playlist. Um, and hey, okay, a bit of bokeh there going on. Um, <laughs> so, what made you want to stay? You came in 2012. Yeah, and you. Uh, 2012 uh, for work. And I was mm -hmm. doing a telecommuting for a company back in the States. And uh, I don't know, just spending time out here, uh, mostly not necessarily Tokyo itself, but visiting like the countryside, going out, visiting the, the three views of Japan mm -hmm. and meeting and talking with the people. I think that's what kind of convinced me. I think the ability of being in Tokyo and then being able to go out to the countryside or go up to the mountains, go out to the beach, go anywhere uh, <clears throat> within a day trip and being able to come back. I think that's what sold it for me. Mm -hmm. Living in California, you need a car for everything. So if you're tired driving, you have to stop and rest up. Um, everything is far away. If you want to go to San Francisco, that's an eight-hour drive. Wow. If you want to go to Yosemite, that's even further. You want to go to Las Vegas, that's like three-hour drive. If you want to go to anywhere, it's it's hours and hours and hours of drive. But I could hop onto the train and within 40 minutes be over in Nico, which mm. is one of like the beautiful places up here in Japan. Yeah, so the Toku, Tokugawa Iyasu uh, shrine and everything, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, cool. Yeah, it is. I mean, I found Tokyo extremely convenient, um, certainly for, uh, in terms of transport. I mean, I, I did have a rail pass, so you know, just hopping on the Shinkansen and buggering off to, to, to Kyoto or, or, or whatever was quite simple. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that. I mean, I mean, and, and also, you know, just the, the vibe in Tokyo and, and, and Kyoto and, and places like that, I enjoyed. I mean, it's. it's it's not difficult. Uh, I live in a, in a, a rather middling, fair to middling town in Belgium. <laughs> it's, you know, kind of, you know, compared to Tokyo, I can imagine yeah, wanting to you know, to move there. Right now, <clears throat> you just before the show, you 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 were combing your growth. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, and, uh, apart from becoming Tokyo Mega Beard, which is my nickname for you, <laughs> what other things do you think have developed in your life uh, since arriving in Japan in 2012? Oh, God. Yeah, um, yeah, big questions. Yes, this is your life. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I guess a passion for going out to the outdoors and a passion for climbing, mm -hmm. uh, climbing mountains. Uh, Definitely trying to get more in tune with photography and, uh, I don't know, just trying to travel a little bit more. Hmm. So, I mean, before that, before you, 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 you made that move to Japan and, and uh, you, ha you didn't have that? You, I mean, yeah, obviously, because you yeah. three hours to Los Angeles, three hours to here, you thought, well, bugger that, you know, I'm staying home. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, I lived in uh, Anaheim, California. Uh, basically the same place where Disneyland is at. Mm -hmm. So it was boring, to be honest. <laughs> There's really not much to do. People think you go to Disneyland every day, but I'm not going to spend $100 to go to Disneyland. <laughs> yes, it's really, and it's also really for children, really, isn't it? Seriously, come on, it's Disneyland. Yeah. I, 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 went to, I went to Disneyland Paris once. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents got a hotel 
book the hotel. And, but that was because we had children who were of the age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I would not. I would not voluntarily go to to Disneyland. I'm afraid. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> well, it's also like anywhere that you want to go, there's traffic and it's always crowded. There's a lot of tourists, so it's the same as living in Tokyo, and it's just a pain in the ass, to be honest. Mm. And it wasn't worth it, so I just basically went to work, stayed at home, and that was it. And I worked a salary job, so I'd be working until like 10 p.m. at night, anyway. Oh so God! That's pretty much all I did. Well, I, I'm just sorry. I, 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 I'm just reacting to the beer. I, I had a rather nice Belgian beer. <laughs> now, 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 now I've, I've transferred to. Um, uh, oh, we, oh, we've got somebody coming in here. Um, we do. Uh, oh, hello. I better put, I put, the, put the appropriate picture up. There we go. <laughs> there. We, we, yes. Hey. Hello. Awesome. Awesome. <clears throat> All this right. is yeah. You weren't expecting this, were you, Victor? No. You did not yeah. expect. Uh, this is your life. You did not expect. <laughs> Trixie had it. <laughs> All right. Ah, welcome. Yes, you can. We, we can have. We can. You can regale us now with stories because you, you, Victor was inspired. Has developed a, an interest in climbing mountains for some reason <laughs> since he came to Japan. You could perhaps elaborate on this. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Who? Well, uh, whoever's ready. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a mouthful of pizza, so. <laughs> <laughs> I might deal with the uh, delay between the uh, window of the open chat and the uh, Google's Hangout, but mm. got it sorted. But, uh, here we are. Well, really quick, Fred, if really wants this desperately answered, uh, how is it to have such a beard in Japan? And is it unusual to have such a big beard? What's the reaction of people to you and your beard? Uh, how is it like to have a beard in Japan? Same as anywhere else. Is it unusual to have such a beard, big beard? It depends on where you live and what is the reaction of the people. To be honest, people really don't give two shits. <laughs> um, it, it, it's your face. So obviously if I shave, everybody's going to think it's completely weird. <clears throat> yeah, and, it takes uh, years off you. <laughs> yeah. And it's not that bad because, I mean, you could get beard oil here and there so you could actually upkeep your beard very easily. Mm. So it's not too much of a pain. Uh, that's, a, that's a good point, man. You can get beard oil in Japan because Japanese, on the whole, men, Japanese men, generally don't produce such such exuberant growth. <laughs> exuberant. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, you have a speci specialist shops. I'm uh, sure you can't just go down <clears throat> to the to the, like, the, the local chemist and get some beard oil. No, or actually, this is what I fact, I go to like Tokyo Hands and I buy the materials in order to just make it at home. All oh, right, yeah. that, 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 cause I, I conjured up some, an, an alchemical kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, surprisingly, it's 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 pathetically easy, and anybody who spends like sixty dollars on a small thing of beard oil is completely stupid. <laughs> there you are. <clears throat> That's well, a, I mean, that, like beard oil, all it is is just you know, like I don't know, almond oil, argo oil, or whatever else oil, and then. You just add like essential oils just to uh, get like oh. the, the smell that you want. Well, there it's you just go. Matter, like, okay, That's I want peppermint, I want pine, and I want, you know, this and that. And then boom, you have your own oil for like $2. Pizza, pizza, pizza flavor, pizza flavored beer. <laughs> hey, Tokyo Drew. Hey. So, mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's an idea for you. Now, there's an idea. Your beard oil, you, you make your own. Pet, you can start a Patreon page. You know, giveaways, you know, free bid. <laughs> so like pluck one hair, put it in the oil for authenticity. <laughs> so, Bushido yeah. Devil Dog is is with us, and he is here in the background behind me as well. <clears throat> yes. Right, I should I should better go to the question relating to this <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. photograph. Right. Which is which is where are uh, yes. <clears throat> you are now itching. Itching you are to climb Mount Fuji again, Victor. Correct. <laughs> um and I, I, I did uh, after I'd written the question, I went and checked your videos and, and thought, oh bugger. <laughs> 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 this is 
because because uh, my question was are there any other mountains in japan that you would make as much preparation and effort to climb uh, and there were other mountains but um, i don't know quite i mean it could still be relevant it could be that you do you did you make as much effort and preparation to climb those as you do this um yes to be honest there's not that much preparation involved with climbing mount fuji from sea to summit it's just mm. make sure you have enough water make sure you have the proper equipment that's it ah. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and a memory card. Yeah. <laughs> and know where you're going. Know the route. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you have, you have a fucking mountain in front of you. Right. It's obvious where you're supposed to go. <laughs> it's not <rather> big. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that, that that photograph in my in my advert uh, is it was a, it was a shot of somebody taking the the actual shadow uh, of Mount Fuji from the summit, which is this, mm. this, this huge giant triangle that covers <laughs> half <laughs> the prefectures. <laughs> no, but as for other mountains, I think uh, Mount Nantai over in Tochigi Prefecture, which is uh, what the dog and I have tried multiple times to climb and have yet mm -hmm. to uh, summit. Yeah. That's probably more a reflection not of it being so tough a climb as, as the timing when we've gone so far with the snow to deal with. So, mm. yeah, we uh, we started off trying to climb it in the dead of winter, which is uh, not so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Work schedules. That's what that's what it was, wasn't it? Probably work schedules. Well, to be honest, yes, it was. Uh, a bit, yeah. we, had to be, we had to be back uh, the next day, and it's like a four hour, five hour. Is it like a four hour drive? To get up there, uh, and, I'd say about three. Yeah, about three. Yeah, but I mean, it's like the dis the time to actually get up the mountain is significant. I mean, if we were able to do like two day a two day hike or something like that, or a three day hike, then that would easily be doable. But just the fact that we have to leave early one day and then go mm -hmm. probably hike one night and then get back immediately the next day that puts oh, a very God. severe time restriction on us. Uh, there's no pressure, so stress. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, it, it's tough because this last time we were expecting them to take the official trail, which is like a straight shot up and down, and you don't need any gear. However, uh, the mountain itself is owned by a temple, mm. and the temple decided to close off the trail. <laughs> <laughs> so we were kind of screwed, and we had to go around the back end, but the back end is an extra, like, five-hour hike. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> And that, that side, the, the straight up shot, that's on the south side. So, you know, of course, facing the sun, the snow's going to get melted sooner. Going on the north side, we ran into much more snow than we anticipated. We thought, okay, well, we're doing it later than we did the previous two times before. But still, it's literally in a valley. So mm -hmm. on that back side, the snow was still there, still the waist deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so... Mm. So that was a pain in the ass, and one of these days we'll get revenge. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get it. Mm. For sure. I mean, uh, uh, you're in the, you're both now in the planning stages for for the next um, for the next trip to 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 Fuji. When is that actually? When when are you when are you planning to go? To uh, usually, I go on the second week of August because that's mm. when the open time is, and everybody can usually get the time off. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. All right, yeah, this people. So. All right. This year, that's going to be, we're going to have to take a day off if we do that one because it's not going to give us the official holiday falls on a Saturday. So yeah. in the previous times, we had a three-day weekend, so we don't have that. We'll have to take a day off if we do it. So Yeah. But, but you're all set. You're all... <clears throat> Pretty much, yeah. To be honest with Fuji, it's more of a mind over matter thing. I would I mean, say that yes. I mean, I mean, I, I agree there. I mean, I've seen photo. I mean, uh, <clears throat> extensive like video checking and, and photograph checking for this show, um, and it's it's rather bare <laughs> up there. There's There's no, nothing to see, and to be honest, the, the first the first half, I guess, is the is reaching the mountain itself, mm -hmm. and you're you're on road, so it, there's just nothing to see. It just feels like you're walking forever, and there's no. Oh. There's no change in your distance, but you eventually get up there. And then once you're actually on the mountain itself, then that's when you're, uh, the tiredness kicks in. <laughs> the lack of oxygen makes you a little bit more tired. And then it's just a matter of just pushing forward. Take your breaks when necessary, but just keep going uh -huh. forward. Mm. I mean, I, I, at one time, I mean, my, my, my youngest son, where we go, I mean, it's not nothing in comparison, but we go back to England to the Lake District. And um, 
each time we go in the summer, <clears throat> sort of, I try and, and take them up a hill or two. <clears throat> and uh, my youngest son now is, is quite <clears throat> enthusiastic. He wants to go up a, a, a hill again. But for me personally, it was it's like, <sighs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I quite like the valleys and and and, and the rivers and, and the lakes and the, it's just just that's that slog. I mean, when you get to the top, it's great, but it's it's the slog that, that that's the that's the thing that that, that 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 kind of like gets to me. I think that's what I kind of welcome, to be honest. I mean, working every day in Tokyo, taking the trains, the packed trains, uh. dealing with people that walk slow in front of you and just like, oh, <laughs> bullshit nah, living out here in tokyo it's just like when you're out there on the mountain and even though you're, you're going at your own pace there's yeah. nobody else around but you and it's just you and nature for the most part and i think mm. that's the best part and the fact that we always climb mount fuji from the south end it's never crowded everybody ah. bitches and complains about you know mm. oh you have to wait behind so many people that's only the fuji yoshida side the north side ah this, this I, I, side i've seen videos there. sorry i've seen videos and it's like crowds and crowds of people all going you know. well it, it's obvious because that's where the that's where all the buses take people to the fifth station but mm. i mean there's four ways to get up that damn mountain and everybody mm. just wants mm. to go up this one bottleneck mm. Oh, I mean, that's good. I mean, uh, I mean, one one day, perhaps. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm, uh, I'm not committing myself here. <laughs> if I <laughs> get back in half the time, <laughs> I might get a bus. <laughs> to mm. <the> station. <laughs> yeah, no worse, no worse. <laughs> Right, I don't have a picture for this one, so let's just go back to, to, to random Japan backdrop. So uh, I've got to go to my playlist and let's get this one going. Yeah, here we are. This is random J Japan in 8K. Is this 8K. The, that's the new thing, folks. You have to get 8K. 8K? That's 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 so last year. There's a 12K footage now. Yeah, 12, you know I mean, 12, 12K is, 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 is the industry norm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, by the time we all catch up, it'll all be like, you know... You know <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Virtual reality, anyway. So, uh, um, yes. Do you still consume food for a living? I mean, uh, we were talking about Yummy Japan. <laughs> this, this is, is this an is ideal, an ideal Japan. job. <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, to be honest, ever since living out here in Japan, like I don't usually go to like gyoza places, ramen places, soba, or any like real Japanese food. I I miss Mexican food most of all. Ever mm. since moving out here. So I'm always actively searching for Mexican food. On mm. top of that, really great uh, burger stands. And, you know, Fat Burger came out here from California, I think, like a month ago. This doesn't, doesn't so, mean words, mm. Fat Burger. You know? <laughs> yeah. But it's like, it's like there's so much coming out here in Japan that it's just like I want to try all of it. And once you go to one, like, ramen stand, the other ones are pretty much the same. Mm. Like, everybody gets off on uh, going to Ichiban Ramen. In Tokyo, but Ichiran Ichiran ramen is like crap. <laughs> <laughs> there we are, which... it, it's so bland, but everybody's just always like, "Oh yeah, you know, oh let me take this Instagram picture of me eating a Ichiran," and it's just like it's mm -hmm. it's it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, we're, we're in Japan. It has to be good, you know. It's it's just the same as spaghetti. <laughs> Back home <laughs> in your kitchen, <laughs> no difference. No, it, it, there are some places where, like this ramen, this gyoza, this soba, it's like really, really amazing. Mm -hmm. But it's like once these places get like really played out, they all just kind of like screw with their recipe or whatever, and it gets really boring quickly. Ah. So I like having the variety of being able to switch back and forth, not necessarily just like. <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip back to my other playlist here because this is slightly more appropriate, probably for for the next question. Um, sorry, jumping around here. We here we have the bokeh again. Um, and, and 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 relating to to what we were talking about earlier in photography, and mm -hmm. and your current your current theme, which which you 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 say you were flipping backwards and forwards, but I noticed that. Um, uh, Omoide Yokocho, Shinjuku, Shibuya, etc., uh, often feature in your photography at night. Yes. <laughs> Is there a particular reason other areas get less well exposed? <laughs> well, <clears throat> it's kind of like making YouTube videos. Everybody mm. has to make a uh, convenience store video, a uh, 
and like a vending machine video and a Shibuya crossing video. Yeah. <laughs> Same with photography out here. Those those three places are pretty much the main icons of like Instagram. Mm. Omoide Yokocho, Shibuya crossing, Kabukicho, all these places are pretty, pretty much oversaturated. I mean, the only reason I go there is because I'm tired when I get off work. They're on my way home. Mm. And I could take the picture. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I thought that was a reason. I mean, it's, 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 that's a very reasonable reason. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. mean, those are the best, the reasonable reasons. You know? The reasonable reasons. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's why, why, why sort of the entire content of my, uh, my videos that I produce ha happen to be just villages in, or towns in Belgium. Like, mm -hmm. Where else am I going to go? <laughs> I did go to Luxembourg uh, once. And, and, and film, do something there. But um, that was like a two hour drive. But yeah, yeah I, I agree with you sort of, you know, <laughs> yeah. at the end of the day, you don't want to sort of uh, mess around out of your way. <laughs> well, it's like, I live one hour from Tokyo itself. Mm -hmm. So I get off of work at six. So if I fumble around taking pictures until like seven, seven thirty or so, I don't get home until like eight thirty or nine. And you still got to have your tea. <laughs> yep. Still got to have my, my nightly beer or whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I don't really want to spend two hours roaming around or another hour to go to Tachikawa or go uh -huh. to Chiba. That's going to take even longer just to get home. And then I have mm. work the next day. And do you, I mean, Paul's here now. Do you, do you, do you guys uh, get a chance to meet up sometimes? Occasionally. Yeah. Every yeah. Other month. Yeah, we tried to set up something this past Friday, but he already had a, a shoot that he already planned. But uh, we'll probably do something in the next week or two, right? So get up, meet up for beer. So plan our next uh, adventure. So when uh, doing our last hike, we also kind of, you know, had a meeting in the minds that instead of climbing mountains all the time, you know, gutting it out, it'd be nice just to go out to do just a nice, you know, chill out, you know, no real major hiking involved, just a nice camp out, you know, just bro out mm. and chill out barbecue or something like that. So. Oh, that sounds good. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and as, I mean, as you say, and, and from Tokyo, it's quite easy to, to, to get somewhere like that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> so definitely, I mean, there's Chibi, and there's all kinds of places, you know, pick a direction and go, so there's going to be something out there, so... Mm. I'm I'm impressed. Hi Simon, I'm impressed with my multi, your my multitasking. Yes, it's me and me and an app, me and an app, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> a beer helps. It helps lubricate between between switching between backdrops and and, and typing to the viewers. <laughs> ah. Where are we? Ah, uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, going, just, just switching back to photography. I'm, I'm jumping <clears> around <throat> all over the place here. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but I mean, uh, uh, one question was, I, I, on, on, the, on my show the other week, I had uh, Norm, Tokyo Lens. Mm. And he also has a passion for photography. And he's sort of produced some prints and in, con in combination with Amazon or something. And then uh, he's flogging them. Have you ever considered doing that? And do, or do you do that? Have you done that? Have you sort of have, produced have work as well? You've no. done it? No, I have not. You have not done that? And people have asked me and sent me messages and DMs on Instagram, but to be honest, I just can't be asked to <laughs> take the 15 minutes out of my day to sign up and set, set these things up. I just, I can't. Uh, uh, just, limit, too, limit. too busy making beard oil in your kitchen. That's <laughs> well, it's not necessarily that, just that like my my main income uh right now has to do with like dealing with like marketing social media services and stuff like that mm -hmm. so it's like i'm doing that 24 7 for work yeah, yeah, yeah. And by the time i get home all i want to do is just take a break away from all this crap and <laughs> away from all this crap also includes my own personal stuff mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah i am uh burnt out in a way so I don't want to sit down and go on Amazon or go on any of these other like print things and just mm. set everything up just for three dollars every other month or so. It's not worth my time. Yes, uh, so, yeah, I see. What you mean. I mean, um, uh, it, it, yeah, it has to be. Uh, <clears throat> it has to be worth it. <laughs> yeah, and well, it's not necessarily worth it. It's just I don't feel that my photography is at that point that 
it. No, oh, I don't know. It deserves to be printed and it deserves <laughs> to be bought. Really? I think do, there's do you a lot of print anything out. Actually, just sorry to interrupt, but I mean, do do you do? You, I mean, because these days <clears throat> in the digital age, I've got I've got apps. I've got one thousand. God knows, 2,000 photographs on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I haven't printed any off at all. <laughs> no, I've never printed anything. However, I do have something, so I'll, I'll be right back. Ah. Oh. <clears throat> so what, what are you up to these days, Bushido? Because mm. I mean, you, you, you did Aki Gohagara. And uh, yep. and then we didn't see you again at all on YouTube. <laughs> no, I made okay. it back. Believe it or not, I did make it back. So, uh, so it's become the most popular video. So, uh, it's, uh, it's so the this thing. year it's live stream, live stream. stream. What the fuck? <laughs> so this year was actually uh, made kind of like as a fan art for me, oh, and nice. uh, it was made by uh, this German uh, artist. Mm -hmm. She does a lot of really cool stuff on Instagram as well. And she actually came out to Japan and basically gave me this in person. So this mm, is the first cool. real kind of like fan art I've gotten from based on like one of the pictures that I took out here. So all right, cool. Uh, getting actually, stuff like this and having like human face-to-face -face interactions for me is far more valuable than three dollars from a shitty picture on you know, Amazon. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not trying to knock on Norm or any of the photographers that do. It just to be honest, I don't think my stuff. Is that that level yet? So I mm. just want to be clear on that. Mm. Oh, that's mm -hmm. great. I mean, the, the, the fan art. I, I'm, I've done fan art. But I mean, <clears throat> before I, I did a, I did an entire video once uh, for Caffeine Jedi. I drew a picture because she was making a, um, uh, a web series. Oh, I kind of like made made it made it like a like a film poster version. And I, and I actually uh, gave away a, a, a copy of it uh, to somebody. Oh. That was my one and only <laughs> uh, <laughs> giveaway. No, I mean, eventually, if I, get, if I get enough followers or enough interaction on Instagram or any other kind of, like, media stuff, then mm -hmm. I'll probably think about doing that. But as for right now, I barely reached 2,000 followers on Instagram. And, oh, uh, oh, 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 2,000. I mean, no, no, uh, Paul, Paul, Paul and I are like, like going, oh, right, really? Yeah, right. I haven't even get double digits yet, so. <laughs> well, yeah, but if you think about it, other photographers are into like the tens of thousands and stuff. Yeah. So, and well, I've been doing this for two, somewhere. two years. So, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip to <clears throat> to this background now. I, I have no idea what's going on here. You can, you I, can I love, explain. I love this background, by the way, because <laughs> <laughs> uh, this leads into my next question. <clears throat> uh, I mean, I, I I was up till about half past. I was about about eleven o'clock last night playing Metal Gear Solid Five, <laughs> but I noticed nice. that you st I, I noticed that you still game. Uh, now here's the question. <clears throat> Nothing to do with this. <laughs> this, is <monster. laughs> this is Monster Hunter, by the way. Uh, which is best, multiplayer, single player, uh, and PC or console? <laughs> this is where we upset everybody. <laughs> uh, oh God, uh, I'm I'm a single player kind of type of guy. I, I hate playing with other people. <laughs> <laughs> Great, yeah. <laughs> because playing with other people, people will just find new ways to disappoint you. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so yeah, well, playing solo is for me. Um, as for console or PC, it depends on the genre. Uh, if it's like a role-playing game and stuff like that, then definitely I would go with a console. Uh, mm. If it's a shooting type of game or kind of like a strategy type of game, then I'd go with console as well. Ah, I've never played it. I've never played uh, a, um, a contemporary role-playing game on PC. The only time I played a, a role-playing game on PC, uh, have you ever heard of a, a game called Zork? <laughs> Only if you're eaten by a groom. Mm. <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a game from uh, 1991 or 1992. <laughs> so yeah, it's a role-playing game on on on, on PC. It's a, a text-based role-playing Dungeons and Dragons game. Hey, I love text-based text games as well as muds. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, giving away my age there. <laughs> So we'll just leave this running in the background. I mean, uh, well, perhaps you could explain this because you 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 you've completed it. Apparently, this uh, uh, I, I've completed the main story, but I haven't completed the game whatsoever. Ah. 
So there's, I mean, uh, so side quests, you've got all the side quests to do. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Right, I'm going to, did it, where's my, I, I'm just going to shift, I'm jumping around again. again. But I had a nice no. picture. Oh, here we are. Here's a nice picture. Let's get away from that. <clears throat> there we are. So I, I, I'm now half cut because because I've had I've had three beers while well, we've been on the air. I'm number, number one myself here. Well, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna pop the top to uh, one of my favorite oh. beers here. So here's 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 what it looks like. This is kind of a very smoky nice. type of beer. Uncle, and uh, it is amazing. Let me click on this so people could actually see. Hi, Ty. There you go. <laughs> if you could read this, many props. Uh, this is kind of hard to find in Japan, um, but every now and then you do find it. It's actually pretty cool. One of my favorites. And here's something uh, this uh, bottle opener I've had for 10 years, and it's finally gotten to the point where uh, it no longer works. <laughs> <laughs> the actual the bottom part has become so overworn that it could barely even open anything these days. This is, I mean, this you know, this is a test a testament to, to <laughs> your your level of health. <laughs> uh, yeah, when you carry carry around your own bottle opener just in case. I don't know, it may be a sign that you're you know, possible uh -huh. alcoholic. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I don't know that difference. Alcoholics go to fucking meetings. I'm a drunk. Get it right. <laughs> there you go. So, I mean, uh, this this leads me on to my. Uh, here we have Japanese craft beers. A craft beer is a kaya uh, uh, and some craft beers. Um, I mean, do you do you, do you partake of? I mean, you're you're drinking a German beer there. I see. Yeah. But, um What do you think of the uh, the Japanese craft beer scene? Do you do you partake of it? Depending on where you go for a craft beer here in Japan, it's it's give and take. The majority of the craft beer in Japan is tastes like piss water, to be honest. <laughs> oh dear! It, it's really horrible. I mean, if you go for something like Bear to Beer, uh, Hitachi no Beer, uh, those ones are kind of getting off to a good start. But like all the main brands, like Kirin Asahi, uh, Orion too, they're trying to get you know get a piece. Of this like craft beer thing and mm. all their beers just taste like ass so i would stay the hell away from them um to be I honest know what ass tastes like but i mean no, they'd be good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> take your word for that yes <laughs> <laughs> fuck you <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, uh, 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 well, I don't have a I don't have a picture for the next question. So I'll, I'll just go into some way cozy and safe and ask uh, ask ask this next question. Shoot. <laughs> well, you you might not like. Oh no no wait a minute go back I'll go back because I, I didn't ask the question re relating to 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 those beers. Uh, other than uh, do they taste like ass? No, but can you can you name five beers in order of preference? Uh, and it must, it must include their alcohol percentage. Okay, so my number one is this one here, and it's a 5.5. Um, Brewdog has one called the Jackhammer. I think that's like an 11. Good Maui thought. Brewing is has an Imperial Coconut Porter. I believe that's like a 10. That's three. Uh, Punk IPA from Brewdog, I think it's like around like a six or seven. That's number mm -hmm. four. And then after that would be a, uh, oh, what the hell is it called? Um, it's one made by Stone Brewing from like San Diego. Mm -hmm. And they have an IPA that is made with like tangerines. It's super hoppy. I think that one's like a seven as well. Bloody hell. Those are my five. I, I thought I was going to have you stump with that question. <laughs> Obviously not. The man loses beers. So. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I was careful with mine. I was, I went into, the, I was in the supermarket on Friday, uh, uh, and I was like looking at all the Belgian beers that they're in there, and uh, a lot of like, um, like Abbey beers. Mm. <clears throat> and I thought, you know, um, I'm going to have to do this show. I'm going to have to do this show and multitask, Daniel. <laughs> um, so I, I'm going to have to sort of, you know, make sure check the alcohol content because, like, I was at first I picked up a one of eleven percent, and, uh, and I thought, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm going to be on the floor. I'm not going to be able to even like read comments. Or anything. So 
So I, I, I got one of five point. I think the highest one is this one, five point eight. The road, the road and back was uh, five point two, um, and this this American one. I wonder what happens if you mix it. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> <laughs> um, this this one was I can't even read it. Um, four point three. Oh, it's American. Oh. Yes, it's four point three. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so but you uh, know what? There, there's actually an American one uh, called Strauss. They make a beer. It's a porter, and it is a peanut butter, peanut butter chocolate. Oh God! Stout. And it <laughs> sounds it sounds like it's disgusting, but it is mm. the most amazing thing in the world. And it's it is it. strong too. It's like a nine, and it's like it's one of the big bottles too. Oh man, that is heaven in a glass. Oh, I just for some reason like uh, 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 peanut butter and, and peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. I, was, I thought you were going to say yeah. peanut butter and jelly yeah. beer. Try Can you find that in Japan? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, occasionally. The main place that I go to for most of my craft beer is actually Antenna America over in Yokohama. They have oh. probably the best selection of like American craft beer. Oh. Peanut butter, peanut butter. There you have it, viewers. Peanut butter, peanut butter flavor. Oh, they even have like Mexican chocolate, like porters and stouts and stuff like that. Okay. Nice, nice. Uh, uh, Ty, Ty Naka just—he's on the sake, and the, I'm not quite sure what the what this means. Anybody have any idea what this means? Hang out. It's, uh, All right. hang okay. out. it's like surfer, surfer lingo. <laughs> All right, uh, I think I think I think I've drunk enough now to to, to, to dare to ask the next question. <laughs> okay. Uh, for this for this, I'll just go back to my living room. There you go. Um, <clears throat> right, are you ready? Yes, possibly. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> right. Do you have names for any future children you may have, and if so, are they Western names or Japanese names? <laughs> <laughs> no, I do not have any names ready. Oh, However, just, there, there's if I Mrs. Do, Megabeard is listening intently in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> if this gets cut off suddenly, you know what happened. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> no if uh, I don't have any names right now. Uh, however, if we were to decide on any names, I think we would probably choose on something that's both uh, phonetically easy to uh, pronounce in both languages. Mm. No, like not saying like Erica, for example, but Erica is something that's like synonymous between both languages. So something kind of along that mm. degree. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, for my own part, our, my children were named with names that are e equally, you know, usable uh, both in Belgium and in in, in England. Um, you know, Tom and Nick. Uh, there's tons of people here called Tom. It's a sort of Germanic name, no problem. And Nick is also, you know, so you know, we went with that. But it, that's, but I was curious, you know, like you say, there's there must be a sort of limited number of, of names that phonetically sound uh, similar in in Japanese and English. Well, that's true. But I also have an advantage uh, being Mexican. I could also use Mexican names as that's well. That's true. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've uh, uh, another YouTuber I'm friends with. He's Mexican, and his he's married to a Japanese, and his son is called Julio. So they just went straight with the the Mexican sort of, uh, name there, no problem. Ah, Ty's asking when 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 are Victor and Bushido going to make a hiking video again? August probably. <laughs> August, yeah. Again, my yes. earlier. <laughs> yeah, I want to get my lazy ass, you know, back on the computer and edit the video that I took of our last Montai hike. Yeah, you took you took video of that. <laughs> yeah. Procrastinating mother. Yeah, I put the pro in procrastination. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is in the works, uh, slowly but surely. That, uh, yeah, yeah, eventually, eventually I'm going to get back to editing the hours or rather days of footage that I have from all my Mount Fuji bids mm. someday. No, oh, I, I I have a video that I, that I took a month a month ago sitting on my computer. <clears throat> I mean I, I I made one the other day, well the the, the a few weeks ago on a on a bank holiday. I went and went to a sort of Belgian village and 
took some shots of a castle that was rather nice and popped it on my channel said you know watch this in between my shows <laughs> got, got about 14 views <laughs> oh, <bugger> this. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, yeah. That, that's that seems to be the case though i mean you work your ass off for something and it gets no no love whatsoever and then you just <laughs> throw on the random bs and all of a sudden it blows up yeah, I should have. I should have. I should have brought um, along a cat or something. <laughs> cat, cat yeah. visits castle. <laughs> I'd have been. I've been. I've been away. Um, <laughs> yeah, mm, that, that's how it works. My, yeah, so my what you have to. What you have to do for your next Fuji video is, is take your cat with you in in a backpack. <laughs> no, there's <laughs> there's this one guy online. Uh, I shit you not. He has a cat that goes uh, climbing mountains with him. Oh, <laughs> and the cat is like. The cat is perfectly trained to like stand and stay on his shoulder while he's like hand climbing this entire thing. It's it's pretty crazy. <laughs> right. Well, we'll, we'll go back to photography now. I'm jumping backwards and forwards. I'm sorry. Um, you, you do you know Orin? Uh, Orin yes. Heath on, uh, on on Instagram. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Because I mean I follow him too, and um, uh, he's there in Japan. I can't quite remember where. Uh, somewhere countryside ish um and he recently moved back to using analog cameras and film and uh well let's jump back to this this one which is which is <coughs> your your pimp sakura um um <laughs> uh, but, uh, would you know how to achieve similar results that you get with with uh, digital manipulation would you know how to achieve that using a dark room and real film? If you're talking about directly from the dark room and trying to get this kind of imagery, no. Mm. Uh, however, from the dark room, being able to scan that and then being able to pass <laughs> out of the room. Oh, yes. you slippery sod. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, I, I, to be honest, I have no experience using analog cameras. Uh, the only no. time I did mm. a pinhole camera in uh, <laughs> High school. God. No, Which it's, was it's... several millennia ago, so. Hmm. When I was a lad, <laughs> that's, all we, <laughs> that's all we had. <laughs> so, no, basically, is the answer to that. that, 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 that like, like, no, short, however, short, I, I am interested in getting a, an analog camera soon mm -hmm. and uh, basically trying to mess around with film. Yeah, because I was I, reading, I, I, I saw on an article sort of on on online that in in Japan it's it's still quite popular. Um, you yes. can send your you know you can send your back like you used to be able to. You could you could send your photos away and get them processed and 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 have them come back, you know, the old fashioned way. <clears throat> yeah, I mean I, I I've only done black and white in a dark room. I've never I've never tried color. I mean. Um, I imagine it's quite difficult to to to, to tweak in color in with chemicals <laughs> in, in a darkened room. Is it even possible? Because the chemicals that you use in the dark room are basically just to expose the image on the print itself. Mm. I may be wrong. I'm sorry for anybody else that's a professional. Uh, yes, anybody again, in the audience that is au fait with the the the, the old manner of producing with, uh, upgraded photographs. From raw stock, please let us know in comments, <laughs> or, 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 or send your postcards to <laughs> Frame of Travel. <laughs> so, <clears throat> oh yes, let's go back, back to the night, back in the night. Okay. Uh, ah, there we go. <clears throat> yeah, this is this is um, uh, this is going back to to photography now. And you produce a lot of night photography, and we we know why now you produce a lot of night photography, and we know why it's sort of a particular area. Um, and you you <clears throat> manipulate the colours, but um, and you mentioned those Jap Japanese uh, uh, photographers who use quite a lot of colours in their in their work. But have you ever tried? Um, or felt the need or desire to produce a photorealist or photojournalist hard-edged style sort of um, 
uh, of, of photography or is that just something that you you look at and think mm, yeah that's okay but not it's not your thing or is it something you you might you know want to do um i would definitely love to try it out but i guess the most difficult part about that is that i don't have any real um education when it comes to photography itself mm. so i guess i wouldn't feel comfortable just jumping straight in without kind of having like a mentor mentor mm. or somebody actually teaching me what the basics I mean, are yeah i mean on, on the one i mean when when you just to, just to go to, aside from that when you when you go out and and you're coming back from work and you think right yeah that's a good shot that's a good shot how do you how do you decide what you're going to take or do you do uh, uh, do you just fire off a load or do you do do, you, do you... <laughs> uh, that, that was a bad no sorry this is not thrilled to... <laughs> 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 I just edit that one out. No, do you? Do you I mean, do you? Do you? Do you, do you just like uh, um, take lots of shots? I uh, spray and pray. <laughs> oh, God. Double giggity. God, that's what happens when they have three beers too many. <laughs> uh, no, to be honest, um, I do a lot of mimicry. To be honest, um, on Facebook, on not Facebook, on Instagram itself, I try to find images that I that I really like. Mm -hmm. And then I try to see how close to the real thing I mm. can get. And I use that kind of like as a base uh, before moving on to other kind of pictures. Yeah, but I mean, then, when, when you're walking down the street and you've got your camera, this this extra, extremely heavy camera <laughs> that you're carrying with you, um, do you do you think, right, I'm going to go there, I'm going to frame it up, or do you do you you look and see and think right yeah that's good and and turn Just and everything's and on the spot to be honest yeah yeah, yeah yeah so i mean that 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 in a way it is um the way of uh, uh, of photo journalist photo hard edge style where you mm -hmm. where you're not thinking of the the framing of it so much as as you know you're looking you're looking for the <clears throat> the the scene you know, you know, whether it, for example, just 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 off the top of my head, you know, the the, the like the the tent camps, the homeless camps, would you that kind of thing uh, under under bridges and so on. Um, you know, you come across that and 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 you you would snap that uh, rather than rather than looking for you know reflections in the river or or, or, or the lights or, or whatever. I mean. That, I mean that 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 to me would be the the way of 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 like you say, without researching to jumping into I, it. I think I don't have like for those type of like photojournalists. Uh, what am I looking for? Subjects. I don't mm. feel like I have. I'm a, an authority in that, so I mm. don't feel that I deserve to have a voice mm. when it comes to that. I don't feel. I think it's disrespectful if I yeah. go around, you know, yeah, yeah. taking pictures of like homeless camps or people struggling because I don't have a voice. And then tweaking them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think that is kind of like the cancer that's going on in like this whole social media scene these days, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Facebook or anything, is that everybody is so desperate to have a voice when they don't deserve to have a voice, mm. <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, and yeah, because of that, everything's getting oversaturated, and the good stuff mm. that's out there is kind of getting drowned by this like river of shit. To be honest, <laughs> when it comes to you know the kind of content that we consume online, mm. um, that that leads nicely to our next question. I'm 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 the, I'm the king of segues here. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen your I've seen your Flickr, but you use Instagram more. I think. Um, um, actually, no, no. <laughs> All right. No, I use Stop. Flickr more. All right. You I mean, like Flickr more or you use Flickr more? I use Flickr as a uh, backup for all my pictures, basically. And then ah. I put up all my test shots up there. But because Flickr isn't so so popular, um, mm. I usually just grab from there every now and then whenever I want to like uh, post something on Instagram itself. Mm. Actually, mm. You, you'll find three times more pictures on my Flickr account than on yeah, on Instagram itself. Hmm. 
And that, that leads into the question, which is how influential are, are social media platforms with regard to trends and tastes in, in, uh, in photography, would you say? I think very influential because all it takes is for one post to have, say, the colors brown and, you know, purple as their main images. And if this gets, you know, like 2,000, 5,000 likes, and if it gets reshared by other reshare accounts, mm. then everybody and their mom is going to copy this for like the next two weeks or the several months. If somebody has like fairy lights, which is like these little small lights from mm. an LED, and this gets shared a lot, then everybody else will try to copy this. Ah, this, and, I mean, yes, I noticed that the the, the sake comments <laughs> that, that you you put or, or, or with regard to uh, uh, you were you were describing an image on Instagram. <laughs> I remember yes. that with the fairy lights and the book here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the thing. It's just like people see these shots that at the time were original, mm -hmm. and so many people try to just copy it straight up off the bat with the purpose of just wanting to get the same amount of likes back so mm. it's i don't know i think it's shitty to be honest oh speaking of likes thumbs up viewers please <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> i mean yeah i mean the the <clears throat> it, it is quite influential in that sense so you you're you're, you're kind of hogtied by by social media uh yes. to a certain extent yeah if you're so, if you're not following the current trend or if you're not one of the first hmm. then you're just gonna be left behind to be honest that's 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 where that's where paul and i failed miserably we, we, we must we must go brown and purple or whatever <laughs> 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 uh, to my surprise i'm still getting views from my alki gahada video i can only imagine what you know what kind of views I would have seen if I had 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 it already loaded up before Logan Paul did his thing. It probably would be <laughs> used to hundred thousand now, I'm sure. But, uh, yes, you could. You you you'd be you'd be able to go out and buy a beer from your, your yeah. from your ad, AdSense. Yes. <laughs> uh, speaking of beer, let me uh, go run and grab another. We'll be right back. Okay, I've run out. <laughs> I've only got a, I've only got a bottle of ro half bottle of rosé wine left. I'm saving that. <laughs> 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 Oh, I've gone dark. Uh, um, let's go back to my living room. There we go. <clears throat> well, well, Paul has gone to the fridge. Um, Roger. You've worked together with other YouTubers. We won't go into that. But, you know, okay. get, get a <laughs> <laughs> But do, do photographers collaborate in a similar way, or are they too uh, idiosyncratic? Uh, yes, they, they do. But it's all about clicks. <laughs> Basically, if you're not part of the group, then you're never going to be welcomed into the group. And uh, especially out here in Tokyo, you have the ones that will go out and take, <clears throat> you know, portrait photography with their models and stuff like that. You have the people that will go rooftoping um, all around <clears throat> Japan and, you know, basically other Asian countries as well. Mm. You have the other ones that will do night shots. And they'll always just kind of hang out together in their own little, like, groups and posses. Mm. And unless you know somebody that knows somebody, it's impossible to get into these type of groups. Ah. So, but yeah, it, it, it goes on, but it's very clicky. <laughs> very, very clicky. Yeah. Uh, I've reached out to several photographers, and quite a few of them have been really cool. And uh, we've gone out shooting together. Mm -hmm. um, but others have just been impossible to kind of sync up with. Mm. Yes, yeah, so you need you you need that sort of to know that 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 certain person who knows them sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Pretty much, it's the same thing as like the YouTube community. People have a, these tiers of like popularity, and if you're a tier lower, several tiers, they don't want to hang out with you. <laughs> unless unless you give them some free beard oil or something. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean I, I should have I should have lined this up. I had I had your I did have your video lined up, but I mean my my app was playing. Uh, I had the rainy night in Shibuya video from from your old channel, um, like from a few years ago. But are you considering making any more uh, videos in that style, or have you have you sort of kind of like like put that on 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 the shelf? I put that on the shelf. Mm. That was me basically trying to do. 
There's one for you, dog. <laughs> I put it on the shelf because I don't feel I have time to dedicate to put out something that I feel is worth uh, is worthy. Hmm. Because I was I was looking I was looking for for I me mean, I thought you know what can I have as a backdrop you know I should have put your video up but it was like a one off and and trying to find other videos in a similar style I, I'm sure they're out there but and I'm probably using the wrong search criteria but I couldn't find any I couldn't find any that you know were done in a, in a filmic style and, and and you know with you know the color grading it's all you know. It's all very raw and, and hard and hard edged and, and uh, vloggy. You should look up a guy called um, Ari Keita on uh, YouTube. He goes around Japan and he takes several videos and he does a lot of really amazing work, stuff that I would love to do. Mm. Uh, except for, again, I just I don't have the time to dedicate to stuff like that these days. Mm. Mm. I mean, the, so that n nothing like that comes happens in, in in your work situation even though you are involved with you know social media and, and 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 you know you can't sort of say to people you know hey come on try see this guy try, do do something like this uh, or, or or do you do you try to influence at all sort of the the people you're or are you just a mediator uh, i've got the influence of basically grabbing the waves <laughs> i got no one whatever <laughs> They don't listen to you. <laughs> no, nobody listens to me. Nobody listens to shit. I don't have a million subscribers on YouTube or anything like that. Where were we? Oh, uh... oh yeah. Here we go. That's it. Um... <laughs> I have I have this this backdrop. I need to get my backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> <The lady. laughs> so, <clears throat> yes. Right. This 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 was a question. I think I think you saw this question. <laughs> <laughs> you do you have to do your own beard, or can you trust its upkeep to your local Japanese barber? <laughs> You know what? There's actually quite a few um, haircut places and barbers around here that do amazing work in Japan, mm -hmm. and they actually have like their shops dedicated to people that have beards, and they do oh, wow, a okay jobs. So if I'm feeling lazy, then yes, I will go out to them and they'll do all the trimming and do all the all the works, and it's a great service to be honest. Mm. However, again with the uh, the current theme is that I'm kind of lazy. <laughs> <laughs> so I do it myself at home. Oh, well, no, 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 that would be the opposite. Doing it yourself, being lazy is, just, you know, you know, you get somebody else to do it. But, uh, you know, so, so it's, 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 you know, you get home from work and then Make do your beard, beard oil. It's <laughs> <laughs> not tonight, dear, I'm washing my beard. <laughs> No. I mean, to be honest, it's not that much. It's not that much work. All you have to do is just put in the beard oil, comb it in, mm -hmm. and then you're done. That's it. If you have any like stragglers that stick out to the sides, you just take a um, like a razor, electric razor, and you just go down and just trim it down from the sides. Mm -hmm. Then you just style it the way you want. Uh, to be honest, right now it's it's looking kind of way too fluffy, and to be honest, I should trim it down. Um, but yeah, just haven't done it yet. No, oh. well, I used to. I used to. I used to do my hair like that. I used to sort of like put olive oil in my hair when when my hair was, was down to here. Uh, and I also had I also had a beard, but my beard never got really thick, so I got fed up with it. So, uh. you know, I kind of had the same thing. I let mine grow out over the winter on the sides, but uh, it's just you know, uh, I'm never going to catch up. You know, with the uh, Victor's epic beardness there, so I just decided for summertime yeah, when it he gets is. hot here. He is Tokyo size. Mega Beard. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, based on the photo, I mean, yeah, so, you know, is it an aphrodisiac? <laughs> is it? <laughs> I beard. have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. You're not. You're, honest, not, you're, you're this, not letting this, on because because Mrs. Banger beard. <laughs> no, this is this is just laziness of not wanting to shave every day. <laughs> well, that was yeah. That was that, that was the reason I I started growing my beard. I got fed up of like uh, scratching my face to bits. So. Mm -hmm. 
All right. <clears throat> well, there was not, it was never an aphrodisiac. No, not at all. No. No, not that no. I know of. I was told to shave it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my missus, she's like, shave it, shave it, shave it, you know. <laughs> I got to keep at least this. Come on now. <laughs> Too tickly. <laughs> Where it shouldn't be tickling. Mm, all right. Mm. Oh. Oh, oh, I miss I miss our time together in uh, in Tokyo. That was really good. I mean, yes. uh, I think uh, when we when we first met up, you and I, Victor, I think uh, we had a color culinary delight near near uh, in Hibia. That's right. Yes, that's right. We 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 uh, Ginza. We had some eel. That's right, unagi. Mm, that was nice. Putting putting the hot tea on it and everything, and then. Uh, <clears throat> And then the three of us met up in uh, Ebis at that uh, stand-up sake bar. That was good. With the, with the, with the, the sake. Oh yeah, we had to sort of yeah, hit it on the good. table. Yeah, I'm, you know, uh, I'm I'm trying to get a, a, a YouTuber on on the show. She's agreed. She's agreed to the firm, but uh, I'm trying to get in touch with her. But I, I gave her some advice you know, to go and try that bar <laughs> and try the the, the frozen sake. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope she does. Yeah. Except for the under chin part. I'm, I'm reading comments here, sorry. <laughs> I like to square that off once it was about three to four inches long. <laughs> it was a fold out. <laughs> it's fold out weird. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so brilliant green was yeah. your was your inspiration and the, and and the, and the, the sounds are japanese let's go back to my living room um has that continued do you are you still a fan yeah i'm a pretty hardcore fan still hmm. i mean do you i mean do you follow that uh that genre i mean um or, i follow or, them as a band of the the main the main singer. Mm. <clears throat> All right. Well, that's, that's very understandable. Uh, let's just transfer to the. Why? I wonder why he follows the. <laughs> 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 uh, uh. I think. I think what I really like about her voice is that it wasn't annoyingly nasally, mm -hmm. like many other Japanese uh, song stresses of the time. Mm -hmm. Like many of them, like Ayumi Hamasaki, have this like ain't like nasally thing like they have something stuck in their voice and they're <laughs> <laughs> and it's just yep. annoying and she just has such like a normal voice and it's a little bit deep at times i'm just like mm. wow it's it's authentic it's raw mm. it's real as opposed to these people who like look at anime and think wow every every japanese woman speaks like this and that's not the case mm. so yeah that's i mean something that i really enjoy that, that, that is a cultural thing though isn't it really i mean uh, my girlfriend in in uh, in Yamaguchi, she she used to work as a, um, a radio announcer and uh, and occasionally on 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 local television, and she had to do that voice, yeah. sort of uh, it was expected of her, uh, yeah. you know, on screen or on you know, on on air, you know, but off air she talks completely normally, so it's uh, very bizarre. Uh, I hear that even in the uh, cash registers, you go to the stores here, you know, the cash registers, you know, guys too, I find this in like, you know, younger guys, they're like, hi, you nice connection ass. It's like, dude, <laughs> man, stop holding your nose, man. <laughs> I mean, it sound like, you, like Victor said, just very nasally. It's just like, yeah. you're not on the radio, dude. You can just like talk to me normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's expected. Yeah. All right. So yeah, you you follow you follow Japanese bands. Now. Well, do you? I mean, apart from Brilliant Green, do you, are, are there any other bands that you then follow? A variety, to be honest, but uh, I've been kind of out of it the last couple of years or so. Mm. Um, there's this kind of like hardcore rock band called Yosei Teikoku, which stands for Fairy Kingdom. They have a a female uh, lead singer. Mm. Pretty cool. I like it because that's a very unique kind of genre of music. Baby Mellow, of course, I really enjoyed because a friend of mine got me into that. Um, gosh, but some of the old bands, kind of like the Pillows, um, 
Asian Kung Fu Generation and stuff like that. Those mm. events are really like back in the day. This is all going over my head, but I mean, it, it would mean something to, 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 to perhaps other members of the audience. Have you heard of these bands, Paul? I, I yeah. doubt anybody has, to be honest. <laughs> I've heard of few of them. I've heard of Asian Kung Fu Generation, the Brilliant Green, I've heard of those. Um, ones that I've like, uh, I like Hitai Ken. Uh, he's not a band, he's a singer, but uh, um, yeah, you thought I could do uh, Strawberry Sex. Mm, I yeah. What? <laughs> Look at his, up. an interesting yeah. song. Uh, uh, his first uh, song kind of got me tuned in with, sorry, was Rock Goon, which I kept hearing at this laundromat that I kept going to, this coin laundry one, before I got my own washer and dryer. And I finally asked some dude who was inside there, I was like, who is that? And he's like, oh, it's like him. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. So, and then, um, I know, Extra Pan, I'm like, you know, I need to look more at some of their stuff to check them out more. But I had actually one of my students when I was teaching. It's like, I said, so give me a, a band that you like. And I was going to, I use it in my lesson, actually. It's mm -hmm. like uh, X Japan's uh, song, uh, uh, not to you, called Kurenai. Kurenai yeah. is awesome. Ah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an awesome song. It's song rocks. So. I actually met in Japan. Speaking of X Japan, a guy, his name is Eric Westfall. He actually worked with Hide and uh, X Japan back in the day. He's a recording engineer, and I met him here in Japan. So, uh, you can find him on YouTube if you look him up. But uh, oh. and then, like several years after I met him, he moved to Hokkaido, and then disappeared. Lost contact with him. And then one day, I uh, was in near my station, and all of a sudden, I just walked right past him. I was like, "Eric, I'm like, dude." Oh. <laughs> yeah, just, cool. Like, weird things that happen in Japan. So, uh, I've heard of X Japan, but that's yeah. largely largely due to Case on Death. Uh, mm. it, because she, I think she's met met them actually. So been, yeah, yeah, they're still they broke up and then I guess now they're back at it again since like two thousand and seven. So, but uh, again, I don't follow religiously, but no, no, been I almost mean, twenty, almost twenty years. So you know, uh, well, that, that, that's, that's pretty good going. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, 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 I've run out of questions now, I'm afraid, uh, Victor. But, uh, I mean, um, feel free to, you know, to ask me anything. <laughs> like, okay. AMA. Okay. I've, learned that. I've learned that from, from, from the other week. I had no idea what AMA meant. <laughs> ask me anything. You ask me um, anything. I also looked it up on, 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 on the Urban Dictionary. It means something completely different, which is rather rude. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> So if you were to, who is the number one person that you would love to have on the show? Oh God, without, without offending <laughs> all my, my, uh, oh, I would, I would quite like on the show, it would be very difficult to do it, would be my actress friend, um, Yoko Shimada. Uh, mm. I mean, I've met her three times now in person and you know i've been for lunch and dinner with her and so on but uh yeah that would be cool if she could if she could be on the show um i'm i'm going to be very lucky i'm going to get uh, possibly next month i'm going to get uh my my singer friend and uh her fellow band member and producer they're going to be on um mm. but but yeah yoko shimada have you ever heard yeah. of her I have. I don't know. Victor, have you heard of her? I know who she is. But... May, the name sounds familiar. If I... Yeah, if you Google Yoko Shimada. I have one word. Shogun. Shogun, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, I don't know. Uh, I, I, when I was a kid, I remember seeing Shogun. I saw it you know, the week it came out and watched it every day. I was mm. just instantly fascinated. That's what got me into Japan and wanted to learn more about Japan was seeing Shogun. As you know, in Taiwan, uh -huh. it was just like Asia, you know, Chinese, Japanese, they were all the same, but that's all that. Mm. Boom, it's like, oh, Japan, hey, cool. So, yeah, it was a good series. I remember seeing it when I was about 13, and you know, there was no video recorders back then. You just saw the yep. episode and you waited for the next next one the yep. next week. Uh, and I didn't see it again for about so like 20 years or more. Uh, and I got, a, got the DVD out from the library mm -hmm. here, and then that's when I discovered who the actress was. And 
I hadn't watched it because I thought, uh, you know, it's not real. It's not. It's not proper oh. Japan. I, I, I got interested in Japan, and and uh, and it was after I got interested in Japan when I read that it was it, it was uh, based on a work of fiction, based on on various historical facts. Right. Um, but I mean, they they're taking liberties, <clears throat> blah 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 blah, and I, and I thought. Mm, um, but I watched it and got re and, and remembered it and got really back into it and was actually moved by it, by her performance and um, and and that's what made me want to sort of get in find out whether she was still going and whether uh, you know there was a way to thank her actually for, for actually making me feel mm. feel something and I did and, and we we got in touch via Twitter and uh, and then Facebook and then I went and met her which was rather amazing. So, mm -hmm. So yes, the, the, having her on 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 the show would be, uh, but that that would be like, oh God, you know, what do we do now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, um, who would you like on the on to if you if I was to to in, invite people on, who, who would you like to see on on the show? Who do you think you know that he'd be good or she'd be good? I'd like to see, you know, Simon uh, check out this person. Have you got any ideas? <laughs> I put you on the spot. No, to be honest, I haven't I haven't kept up with uh, any of the. No, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be YouTube. You know, uh, I'm uh, I'm I'm spreading my wings. It doesn't necessarily have to be YouTube. I, I have no idea right now. To be honest, oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. If you're looking for suggestions, there's a guy. He doesn't have so many viewers, but uh, he's really really still. He's on YouTube. Is uh, name is Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia. His name. He's a professional photographer. Has worked with some, you know, pretty legit famous people here in Japan. And he makes. He doesn't put out videos too often, but when he does, really, really nice. You know, it's like, uh, you have to, you, if you if you can send me the link in, in chat. Yeah. 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 Let me. Uh, yeah, I'll have to look it up here for you. And hopefully before the chat ends. But yeah. But I basically think. It, just go on YouTube, Cassie you should find him. John John Dobb, the Tokyo Drew and Frederick Koning is saying John Dobb huh. from from only in Japan. Huh. But uh, I I would I would be sort of at a loss really because he's lived there like twenty five years and he works for NHK. So <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> um, here I here I am in my bedroom with a, with, a, with a cheap green screen. <laughs> I'm not quite <laughs> sure, <laughs> but I'd be up for it. <laughs> But Cassiopeia, okay, because uh, I'm, I, you know, I, I, I need to fill my slots, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's only there. Okay, I'm looking. There's several that have popped over that name. He's only probably got maybe less than a thousand subs, I think. But uh, oh dear, yeah, really skilled guy. That he should have more for sure because when he does make videos, the quality is just you know outstanding. But uh. Yeah, I have to go to my subscription. I'll send it to you through the link to the chat. Yeah, cool. <clears throat> oh, well, we've reached we've reached that time. Yep. Yep. Casio photo. Casio photo. photo. Yeah, and send it to you right here. Ah, cool. I shall hear a ping in a minute. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> We've reached that time, folks, where uh, I need to go to the toilet. <laughs> um, <laughs> three too many. And uh, I'd like to thank our, our, our guest, uh, Victor, for taking taking time out to join us. Thank you. Uh, and oh, there we go, Cassie up here. Uh, <laughs> and I'd like, also like to thank uh, Bushido Devil Dog for popping in uh, unannounced, but no there worries, well, no worries. Was it? we knew that was going to happen, <laughs> didn't we? <Yeah. laughs> um, and I shall say uh, next week uh, we shall have a heavily pregnant film producer uh, uh, who will be joining us from, from uh, all the way in Brighton in England uh, and possibly doing a stand-up comedy routine uh, to test out on the viewers. <laughs> that will be my friend Ka Caffeine Jedi uh, who will be joining next week. Uh, and the week after that, if he's still in the audience, uh, uh, he's just oh, he's just gone. Um, <laughs> that's Tokyo. Tokyo Drew will be on, on, on after that, uh, and then it's potluck. <laughs> so this is why I'm looking for looking for guests at the moment. 
So uh, if you'd like to say goodbye, folks, uh, we'll say goodbye. And we'll, we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the broadcast. Bye. Thanks, everybody. All right. Good to see you. Bye.